All right. Thank you for your patience, guys. We had to pull some tables in. This is so fun to see so many faces here tonight. And I'm just so excited we have this opportunity to, to just be together. Um, I was thinking about just how much I've been anticipating tonight and just how excited I am. And um, it kind of got me thinking about how in the same way, when it starts to get a little warmer, which we kind of got teased a couple weeks ago <laughs> with that, I start to really anticipate my garden and I start, you know, figuring out what seeds am I going to buy and what am I going to plant where and what flowers do I want and what vegetables do I want to grow and um, there's a sense of anticipation that comes along with that and putting those seeds in the ground and then waiting to see what comes up. And I think, I think that's part of what I anticipate when we come here because um, just like in my garden, there's that anticipation of there's new life, there's, there's new growth, it's a new season. And because we are in Christ, we are a new creation. And so what is so awesome is that when we come together and we sit under the teaching of God's word, we can anticipate God to work. We can anticipate growth in our lives and real change. And so um, I think that's part of the anticipation that I feel as we get to be together tonight. And, and also, I just like really like to be with all of you. It's really fun when we have a chance um, just to be together. Um, and there are some other ways coming up that we can talk about being together. And so I'm going to invite my friend Megan to come up and share with us about something we really want you to put on your calendar. It's a little ways out, but we just want to make sure that you are aware. Yes, we are getting really excited because we are about to approach our second annual uh, Word Speaks conference coming up in November. Uh, we had such an awesome time this last fall. It was such a sweet, sweet blessing and opportunity to be together. Um, this year, we are going to be at the Salem Convention Center downtown. Uh, the dates are November 4th and 5th, so the first weekend in November. And we will have the privilege of hearing from Tara Lee Cobble. And it's just going to be a really sweet time. We're really looking forward to it. So there will be more details to come. You can check out the website or on Instagram or church website or just ask me or somebody. <laughs> we want you to hear about it. We want you to come. We want you to bring a friend. It's going to be a really great time. So looking forward to it. All right, and we have one more announcement from Carrie. I'm doing really great with the transitions tonight, aren't I? <laughs> Hello. I wanted to invite um, all the moms of tots, which um, our definition of tots here is newborn to about five-ish, but it's kind of flexible if you um, have a kindergarten kindergartner um, that is at home. You're welcome to bring them if they're five. But um, we do a play group um, called Moms and Tots Play Group. And um, we've kind of taken the last couple of years off, as you uh, can imagine. Um, but we've started it back up. We've had a couple already, and we meet in the gym here um, from 9.30 to 11.30. We're going to have one more um, this spring. It's the last Friday of April. I think it's April 29th. Um, oh, yes, April 29th, <laughs> uh, 9.30 to 11.30. And um, very casual bring a friend, come on in, there's coffee, and it's just a time, there's toys spread out all over the gym, and you just bring your, uh, your tots in there, and they play, and the moms can sit around and chat. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and hope to see you there. Thank you. Okay, so we want to make sure that you are in the know, and that you're on our email list, so we're going to do our connect code again. So we're going to put this up on the screen. If you are not on our email list and you would like to receive emails with updates with all the things happening, um, this is an easy way to do that. If you are already on our email list or you don't care to be on our email list but you still want a Starbucks card, please scan the code and put your name in. And we're going to enter everybody in for um, a Starbucks card. So you can scan this. A little link will pop up. Click the link. 
fill out the survey real quick, and then we will draw a winner in just a couple minutes. If it doesn't work on the screen, there's also a card on your table that you can use that might be easier. And if that's still too hard, raise your hand and I'll try to help you. Um, no guarantees. Okay, I'll give you a couple minutes. Okay, 
So while we're wrapping that up, we're going to put up an icebreaker question for you to talk about around your tables. We're going to play this or that. So when I, in my defense, when I thought about this question, it felt like spring. And it's not anymore. So we're just going to think spring-like thoughts tonight. So just, you, could, you don't have to do all of these, but just some ideas, this or that. Would you rather hike in the mountains or stroll on the beach? Farmer's market shopping or garage sale hopping? Um, an orderly vegetable garden or unruly wildflowers? Deep spring cleaning or what's that? <laughs> so just take some time around your tables and then in a few minutes we'll, we'll keep going.
Okay, guys, I have our winner for the Connect Code. Our winner is Heidi Myers. <laughs> Heidi, where's Heidi Myers? There, I'm like, <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Congratulations. Go get yourself a coffee or a tea. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're gonna take a really sharp turn. And I'm going to introduce our speaker for the night, Carol. What do you say about Carol? <laughs> that. <laughs> Carol has the best laugh, and she shares it often with us. Um, she has a deep love for her family, and it is obvious in the way she talks about them. Carol has a way of making everybody feel welcome and seen and loved. And I'm sure anybody who's been in a Bible study with her or just had the chance to sit and talk with her has, um, has felt that. And Carol knows God's word, and she knows her Savior, and she delights in knowing him. Um, when I was thinking about Carol speaking, I thought of this verse in 1 Corinthians that says that knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Now, Carol knows her Bible, but it isn't a knowledge that puffs up. It's, it's wisdom and it's humility. Um, I always walk away from spending time with her um, feeling loved feeling built up and feeling spurred on to delight in the Lord the same way that she does. So will you join me in welcoming our speaker for tonight, Carol Reister. Wow. <laughs> That's how I laugh. It's, it's hilarious, I know. <laughs> I, I, did, I told uh, Ellie, I didn't even time this, so we may be here for a long time, I don't know. But Stephanie's going to go, <laughs> get done, get done, get done. Uh, Christ my shepherd is what we're going to talk about tonight. But uh, let's pray first, okay? Father in heaven, here we are. In your presence. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. I don't know if this is, I think, I do know that there's some of you that this is the first time you've been to Girls Night Out this year. But we have been, we, I feel like I'm part of, of the group here, but uh, we have been focusing on the I Am Statements from the Book of John. Uh, a, lot, a lot of you are doing the Book of John this year. My group is, and we are loving it and loving the I Am Statements. Just finished our last one, but um, we just love it. So back in October, uh, we talked about I Am an, uh, I am the Bread of Life from John 6, and we talked about Christ, my Sustainer. There were several women that just talked about difficult things that had happened in their lives and how Christ, Jesus Christ, had sustained them through that. And then at Christmas time, Carol Williams talked about, I am the light of the world. And just um, talked about darkness. And I think even now we feel a real darkness in our world with just war going. And, um, but that Jesus is the light of the world. And that is where our hope is. And tonight, we are going to talk about Christ my shepherd. I am the good shepherd in John 10. Now, I want to give you a little background because I'm going to read parts of it here in just a minute. Just to set the stage for, for uh, what John 10 is. Um, the audience that Jesus is talking to there are a lot of people around here, but the main audience he was talking to were the religious leaders um, because they were after him, asking him questions about different things. These were religious leaders that God had entrusted to be shepherds over his people Israel. Uh, they were not really great at it. <laughs> uh, a shepherd 
These shepherds were to guard, to lead, and to care about sheep. But instead, Jesus rebukes them, and we'll read about that in a little bit. He rebukes them as thieves and robbers. So let me give you a little scenario about sheep and what happens out here. Shepherd is out in the field, and um, he has to go into town. So he grabs his sheep, and they, they go into town. Now, in the cities, they had a sheepfold that was um, like a barn type thing. And so the, the shepherd would take his sheep into these barns, in these sheepfold, and there would be a gatekeeper there. Gatekeeper would open the, the door, and the little sheep would go in. I won't act it out. I try not to act it out. <laughs> bah, bah, bah. Little sheep would go in. And... The gatekeeper would shut the door, and Mr. Shepherd would go off and do his business in town. And then he would come back, and the gatekeeper would open the door, and the shepherd would call his sheep. Now, these sheep are in there with everybody else's sheep that are in there. But the shepherd would call his sheep, and they knew his voice, and they would come out. And he would lead them out in the field to his sheepfold. And that was usually built with rocks and stuff like that around there. And the little sheep would go in there, and then he would let them in and out to feed them and take them the water, but they would go into this little fold. And he would guard them. He would take care of them. Even at night, he would lay across the door of that sheep fold just to take care of them so predators wouldn't come and kill them, you know, take them away. So keep those things. All this stuff in mind as we read John 10, and not all of it, but just part of it. John 10, verse 1, Truly I tell you, anyone who doesn't enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all of his own outside, he goes ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. Jesus said again, Truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will come in and go out and in and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and they know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. So what do we know about sheep? Now, I'm going to say some stuff, and it's probably not really all that true because some of you might have sheep. <laughs> but I have a niece that is a sheep farmer, and so I asked her a lot of questions about, about sheep. Sheep are um, prey for predators. They do not know how to defend themselves. And I'm not going to call them stupid, <laughs> although some people say, you stupid sheep, you know, that type of thing. But they just don't know how to defend, defend themselves. Um, they're skittish. They scatter. They're scared. I don't know if you've ever, not that I have ever done this, but you go by a field where there's sheep and you honk your horn, and what do they do? Boom, they go. I've never done that, I'm sure. Um, it's kind of fun to watch them run, but anyway. <laughs> But they need protection. Very often, if you see a field of sheep, you'll see llamas out there are those great Pyrenees white dogs. They're there to protect the sheep because predators come in there and they just don't even know what to do. So what happens? They get upside down. I just want you to know that no animals were hurt in filming this <laughs> This is a mama, mama, a girl that's, uh, I was going to say, this is a girl that is great with lamb. And um, 
Do you love the faces of those dogs? They look so embarrassed that they have found this sheep out here like this. I love it. I just love it. So, so somebody help this sheep, and that's what they need to do. But this is a mama lamb, and she lay down in a field, and there's something that happens with their brains. or some kind of chemical, something or something happens, and they can't get up. They, they cannot get themselves right. Their brains get confused, and they just can't even remember how to get up. They get disoriented. They need help. My niece says, well, sometimes we have to go out and get the lamb, lambulance and, and take them into the barn. I love that, the lambulance. Um, but they can't get up by themselves. And if they are left out there, if they, um, and, you know, they're already going around seeing who's like this, um, predators will come and do horrible things to them. And th- or they just die like that. And so they need a shepherd to come, to come and help them. Um, it says in here, my sheep know my voice. And how do we know his voice? He wrote it all down for us. Is that a blessing? Here is the very words of Christ, of God. He wrote it all down for us. That's how we know his voice. My husband, uh, before I was even a part of his life, memorized scripture. Uh, amazing how he has memorized so much scripture in his life. So after we got married, we kept up with that pattern. And the very first scripture that we ever memorized was Psalm 1. I am going to say it to you. I'm going to close my eyes, okay? (laughs) How blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bring forth fruit in its season. And its leaf also does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. It goes on to talk about wicked, the contrast with the godly man and the wicked But I just want to focus a little bit on what the scripture says. Um, He delights in the word. He delights in the law of the Lord. He meditates on it day and night because he delights in this. He knows that it's life. And then just the picture of being planted by rivers of water and those roots grow down deep, 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 deep. And what happens is fruit is produced, and the prosperity that comes out of that is the glory of God. This became foundational. This scripture passage really became foundational for me in understanding how important this is to have it here, but to have it here. And so we have made, oh, got to get back to my, every once in a while, Stephanie say, get back to your notes, okay? Okay. <laughs> But it's become a foundation and a priority to meditate, to memorize, and to unpack Scripture. Uh, We have the Holy Spirit living in us, and his delight is to reveal what Scripture means and, and just to stay into it. David, King David, grew up as a shepherd boy, not by accident. God was preparing him. And when he wrote Psalm 23... He was also anointed to be a shepherd over the people of Israel. And he understood what the shepherding duties and the responsibilities were. And so as he goes, as he writes this psalm, it's personal. It's so personal. And so let me just kind of give you an idea how personal it was to David. The Lord is my shepherd. And I don't need anything because he's taking care of every bit of it. He leads me into green pastures and by still waters. He gives provision. He gives nourishment. He restores my soul, my very being. He renews it and he refreshes it. He leads me in paths of righteousness, in truth, 
He shows me what is true and why for his name's sake, for his glory. Even though I walked through the valley of the... I said I wasn't going to cry. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. So I walked through the valley of shadow of death. Or a lot of the translations say in the valley of darkness. And we've all been there. We have all been there. Um, he comforts. Uh, there's no fear because we're never alone, even in the darkest times. His rod and his staff comfort me. The rod was a protection. I mean, it was one of those things if a predator came on, the shepherd would take it out and throw it at him or hit, you know, do something to take care of the sheep. And then the staff was just a tool, you know, you've seen the staff with the crook, but just to keep the sheep on the right path and just kind of you know, keep them where, they get, where they're supposed to be going. He sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And this is not, I've always said I've never had an original thought, but I read this somewhere one time. He said, this is, it's not like just a feast, but he sets before me a table of good, 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 good things. And the enemies sometimes are not just people, but they're, poison or there are things that can harm me and he keeps those away away from me he anoints my head with oil that's refreshment refreshment but it's also sad tip for healing my cup runneth over we're so blessed we're so blessed and that just brings joy and joy to us Surely goodness, his goodness and his mercy, his steadfast love will dwell, uh, his steadfast love will, uh, what's the rest of it? <laughs> you know, surely his goodness and his mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I get to live with him forever. How great is that? That is a promise. That's a promise to us who know him. Mamas, memorize scripture with your kids. Put truth into those little hearts, hearts and minds. They're so pliable. They're so pliable. We started memorizing scripture with our kids pretty early. Um, when they were making sentences, pretty good you know I mean could put sentences together and our eldest child Keith he was he was not quite three but he was talking pretty good and um, <clears throat> we memorized first John 4 7 and 8 and this is he could not say his L's it was so cute <laughs> and we'd say I would say Keith First John 4, 7 and 8. And he would say, Be yoved, yet us yove one another, for yove is from God, and everyone who yoves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not yove does not know God, for God is yove. And then he'd go, First John 4, 7 and 8. <laughs> this past Christmas, our family was all together. We'd open presents and had dinner, and we were sitting around in the living room, and I said, Hey, Keith, there's a possibility I might be doing a talk to the women at our church sometime. I had not said yes yet. And I said, But I need to do a little experiment. And he said, Well, what? And I said, First John 4, 7 and 8. He quoted every word with perfect L's. <laughs> Ladies, that was 40 years ago. It's still there. <clears throat> I'm not going to cry. But it's not just your kids. Some of you don't have kids. Some of your kids are grown. But look for opportunities to get with somebody. Make them accountable. Let's memorize scripture together. Uh, you know, and it starts here. But as you meditate and meditate and go over it and over and over it again, it ends up here. It ends up here. Um, you have friends, you have Bible study, roommates. Just in, 
I just want to encourage you, memorize scripture. Put it in your heart. You never know when you might not have this, and you might need to know that. Uh, I was talking with someone that said uh, about this, and they said, you know, when I was going into surgery, you can't take your paper Bible in there, but knowing scripture, you know, as you're going under, you know, <laughs> having the scripture. I have had a few MRIs in my life. I don't recommend it. But that's what got me through. I mean, I just close my eyes and just start, you know, scripture. <laughs> just to, you know, just to get through that. And it really does help. We just don't know when we'll have this. We just don't know. And if it's in here, it can, we can use it in that way. We have a good shepherd. Why is he good? In verses 14 and 15 of this, it says, I am a good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. Why is he good? He laid down his life for his sheep. He knows my name. And I know his voice. You pray with me. How blessed and privileged we are that we can hold your very words in our hands and share it and talk about it with all kinds of people. Father, I just pray that we will be those that delight in your word, that we meditate on it whenever we can so that these roots can go deep, 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 and that fruit can be produced for your glory. Father, just help us to think about that and just what a priority it should be in our life. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned to our own way. But the Lord God laid on him, my shepherd, all my sin. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For this first song, we're just going to keep a prayerful moment right now. Um, I think the words of this song are just covered just about everything that I want us to just be reflecting on tonight. So just use this moment to think about what Carol's talked about and what God is wanting to speak to you today.
let's go ahead and stand for this next song.
we have, oh, no, we're doing one more song, my bad. That was great. God says that the bark, that just <laughs> cheers me up there. Okay, we're going to do one more song for it right now um, to settle, we're going to settle back down. If you want to have a seat, that would be great. You're welcome to stand, but again, I just want to, wherever you're in the most prayerful mode, you're welcome to do whatever you feel comfortable with.
Thank you, Carol. Um, I'm feeling so um, encouraged and spurred on to know God's word so I can know my shepherd's voice. Um, we're going to take some time around our tables now to discuss the things that we've learned. We'll put some questions up here. Um, so we'll let you have some time um, around your tables, and then we're going to wrap up with more worship at the end.
couple more songs to wrap us up.
last song, I just, we started to practice it tonight, and it brought us back because we hadn't sung it in a while, and there's sometimes there's those songs that probably all of us can pinpoint a moment in time or a place that we've, we sang that a lot, and this is one for me that I think back to a moment when my kids were so much younger, and I think of this as sometimes like a a children's song that we did with children. But it is so, so real and basic when it gets back to what are we doing daily? What are we worshiping? Am I choosing to worship the living God or am I am I finding myself worshiping things that are made of sand? Are they the wrong idols, the wrong things that we should be focusing on? I know that I'm doing that daily some days. And so just a reminder right now, who am I worshiping? And when I'm walking through my day, am I here to worship him? Let's see that, if I could do it without crying. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Opened my eyes, let me just pray that any 
part of our being that isn't in full submission to you and full worship of you, God, would you do that work in our hearts? We are human. We are fallible. We know that we stray. We know that we are those sheep, God. And we know that you don't expect us to be perfect, but God, you want us to turn to you each time. And it delights you when we look to you, our shepherd. It delights you, God. I just pray that we would delight you with our hearts turned towards you, God. Help us to worship you. Help us to bow down and say that you are our God. Lord, if anyone here tonight has not made that decision, God, that I pray that you would not let them leave without knowing completely and assuredly that you are their Savior and you are their Good Shepherd, Lord Jesus. Do that work tonight, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you've been encouraged tonight. Why don't you go ahead and take your seats? I hope you've been encouraged tonight with the reminder that Christ is our shepherd. He's the good shepherd who leads us, who guides us, who protects us, who loves us and knows us. And I know I've been so encouraged tonight to, to know him, to know his word, to know his voice, and to delight in knowing him um, John 10, 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus Christ, God's son, laid down his life for each of us on the cross. If you're here tonight, just like Aaron said, if you're here and you haven't trusted in Christ as your savior, if you don't know what it means to follow the good shepherd, please don't leave without talking with someone. Please come find me. Um, talk to somebody at your table, but we want you to know for sure that that God loves you and that the good shepherd um, wants you to know his voice. Um, thank you, Carol, for sharing with us. Thank you, music team, for leading us. Um, before we go, I just have one announcement. Um, just to mark your calendars for our May Girls Night Out, May 25th, that's our last one of this ministry year. I want to invite you to this very special night of worship. As we've spent this year just talking about who Christ is, we want to take a night to just worship him for who he is. And we have a special guest coming. Her name is Mia Lazar from Summit Church. She's a worship leader. She, she's awesome. <laughs> um, you're going to love her, and she's just going to lead us in a night of worship. So please Put that on your calendars. Make sure that you're here. It's going to be a great night of fellowship and worship just to wrap up our year with Girls Night Out. So I think that's it. Thank you so much for being here. Um, if there's any extra brownies, looks like we cleaned them out. But if there's one left, <laughs> go ahead and grab it on your way out. Good night. <laughs>